Your mission, should you choose to accept it, take a deep dive into the Mission Impossible franchise. The Mission Impossible television series ran on CBS from 1966 to 1973. Its opening titles became iconic, with the imagery of a fuse being lit while the classic theme kicked into high gear. Every week, team leader Jim Phelps would be told, Your mission, should you decide to accept it. Before getting his assignment, every assignment ended with this tape will self-destruct in five seconds, and the cassette would go up in smoke. These days, audiences associate Tom Cruise with Mission Impossible, and fans of the classic show will have fond memories of Peter Graves' Jim Phelps. But there's a famous face that many people may not realize was behind the original series, the legendary Lucille Ball. Mission Impossible was produced by Desilu, the production company founded by Ball and her then-husband and co-star Desi Arnaz. In 1966, Ball and her company set up Mission at CBS and a little sci-fi series named Star Trek at NBC. And both shows gave Ball greater clout in the industry as a producer. Mission was a bigger hit in the ratings than Trek, although Trek of course became a big cult phenomenon in reruns. The Mission Impossible films not only have the major star power of Cruise, but they also have great directors at the helm and some of the best writers in the business. The first mission is credited to David Cope, Stephen Zalian, and Robert Towney, who wrote one of the best films of the 70s, Chinatown. Towney came back for the second mission, and Hollywood wonderkind J.J. Abrams came aboard to write and direct the third film. Brad Bird, known for helming animated classics like The Iron Giant and The Incredibles, made his live-action directing debut with Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Since then, Cruz has had a steady partnership with Christopher McQuarrie, who co-wrote one of the best crime thrillers of the 90s, The Usual Suspects. However, McQuarrie had his first brush with Mission Impossible when he joined Ghost Protocol for some uncredited rewrites. His involvement didn't stop there, and he has been in the director's chair for all of the Mission films since Rogue Nation. In addition, McQuarrie co-wrote the script for Top Gun Maverick, which became one of the biggest box office smashes of 2022, and he's also done uncredited script doctor work. McCrory also isn't against flying by the seat of his pants, since he boarded Mission Impossible Fallout before a script had even been finished. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the shoot began with 33 pages of script, and McCrory and Cruz improvised from there. As McCrory said, the finished screenplay actually confines and limits. All I really need to know is where is the location and what assets need to be there on that day, including vehicles, props, sets, and actors. And that is all we are going to say about that. Much of the cast of the original Mission Impossible TV series were around when the first Tom Cruise movie went into production, but none of them appeared in the film. As it turns out, they weren't happy with how the story was updated. As Martin Landau said to MTV News, when they were working on an early incarnation of the first one, not the scripts they ultimately did, they wanted the entire team to be destroyed, done away with one at a time, and I was against that. It was basically an action-adventure movie and not Mission. Mission was a mind game. The ideal mission was getting in and out without anyone ever knowing we were there, so the whole texture changed. Peter Graves wasn't happy with the movie either, especially considering his character Jim Phelps was turned into a villain. The actor told CNN, I am sorry that they chose to call him Phelps. They could have solved that very easily by either having me in a scene from the very beginning or reading a telegram from me saying, Hey boys, I'm retired, gone to Hawaii. Thank you, goodbye, you take over now. Another original member of the mission team, Craig Morris, reportedly saw the final product and walked out of it. The 90s saw the beginning of the CGI era, with computer effects rapidly replacing real sets and practical photography, as filmmakers gained the ability to create entire worlds through the power of digital technology. Of course, virtual sets are commonplace in movies today, but the first Mission Impossible helped pioneer them in 1996. Virtual sets took a big step forward for an action segment in which Tom Cruise and John Voight fight on top of the Channel Tunnel train. As Industrial Light and Magic VFX supervisor John Knoll explained, We took blue screen elements of actors and put them into believable CG backgrounds. Cruise is going for more realism with his stunts these days, and perhaps he would want to film that segment shot on top of a real train today. Still, this segment in Mission Impossible was a big step forward, opening the door for practically any mind-blowing action segment a director can come up with, without the limitations of imagination, physics, or reality. Oh boy. Even if you don't know the name Alan Silvestri, you certainly know his music, because he wrote the iconic theme to Back to the Future. He was also set to be the original composer on the first Mission Impossible movie, but he was replaced by Danny Elfman. Elfman had five weeks to write and record a new score, 
but as he explained to Soundtrack magazine, anybody coming in second has a huge advantage of understanding what the director doesn't want, at the expense of a lot of work already put in. I knew that they wanted energy. They wanted something a little more operatic and theatrical, just seeing the movie without a score. For Mission Impossible 2, Metallica contributed I Disappear, and when the song leaked onto Napster, it changed the landscape of the music industry forever. In a landmark case, Metallica sued Napster over the leak in 2000. However, the file-sharing genie was already out of the bottle, and the stage was set for downloads and eventually streaming to become a huge part of how people listen to music. Throughout Hollywood history, actors have produced their own films, started their own production companies, and in the case of United Artists, even launched their own studio. Tom Cruise became his own producer on the first Mission Impossible, and this has made him very rich. Mine! All mine! As Variety reported, Cruise is taking less money up front for the next Mission Impossible movies, but he's getting a big chunk of the movie's first dollar gross. This means that he'll be taking home sizable bonuses even before the studio gets a full return on its investment, whereas a star normally has to wait for the film's final back-end gross to be tallied before they get a piece of the action. Cruise's deal for Top Gun Maverick means he can make upwards of $100 million, and he's certain to make a truckload of cash on future Mission films as well. The Mission Impossible films have always been known for their stunning action sequences, and the filmmakers know well enough by now to put particular focus on delivering the goods with each new installment. Sometimes, in fact, the stories are built around action scenes, rather than the other way around. The sole credited screenwriter for Mission Impossible 2, Robert Towney, had worked with Cruz previously on Days of Thunder and The Firm. Towney had worked as a script doctor on a number of films, including Bonnie and Clyde and The Godfather so he knew how to come in and deliver great scenes when a movie needed help. But writing a movie around the action scenes was something he'd never experienced before. As Towney told Creative Screenwriting, they said, These are the action scenes. What do you think of coming up with a story to fit them? I said it was an insane idea, but I did it. Towney finally came up with the key to the story from researching viruses. Then the idea dawned on him. What about a villain who creates a deadly virus so he can make a fortune selling the antidote? It's a chilling idea for an action film, and it would be even more scary today in a post-COVID world. A lot goes into a movie, and with Mission Impossible Fallout, McQuarrie told the world in an Instagram post just what challenges went into making the movie. The filmmaker posted the following, 3,000 setups, 13 helicopters, 6 pregnancies, 5 hiatuses, 4 weeks of aerial photography, 3 continents, 2 winters, 1 broken ankle, that's a wrap. The broken ankle belonged to Cruz, who was injured in a stunt. As Cruz explained on The Tonight Show, he was supposed to be running and jumping across buildings when the accident happened. According to a report by Far Out, Cruz was back in action seven weeks after his injury. As to why he does his own stunts, he explained, It has to do with storytelling. It allows us to put cameras in places that you're not normally able to do. Cruz explained how the first time attempting a stunt is equal parts anxiety and adrenaline. He mentioned how others tell him he's got a huge grin on his face while shooting these dangerous sequences. Here is why Tom Cruise gets paid the big bucks, okay? <laughs> As Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 was being hyped at CinemaCon 2022 in Vegas, McCrory promised the film will feature the most dangerous stunt the team has ever attempted. In order to pull this stunt off, Cruz needed 500 hours of skydiving training, and he had to perform 13,000 bike jumps to nail the landing perfectly. Beyond the stunts, the Mission Impossible shoot was also dangerous because of the pandemic. Cruz in particular made headlines for some heated exchanges with crew members who failed to follow a strict masking mandate. Cruz and McCrory also both reportedly caught the virus, while McCrory had to be hospitalized. Apparently, Cruz has had the urge for dangerous stunts since he was a kid. He revealed at the Cannes Film Festival that he jumped off his roof when he was four years old, making a parachute out of a sheet. The actor described how he recognized it was a bad idea as soon as he leapt, describing how he feared dying from the fall or his mother killing him for doing it. Since COVID hit, the movie industry has been on shaky ground. A number of movies were delayed, productions were shut down, and many were scared that streaming would wipe out the theater-going experience. As the industry attempts to settle into a new normal, Tom Cruise is hoping he can save theaters with Top Gun Maverick and the upcoming Mission Impossible movies. The next Mission films will be released in two parts, and Cruise sets up Top Gun to have a 90-day theatrical window, giving it as much time as possible to make money at the box office. Cruise initially wanted Maverick to have a 120-day theatrical run before the movie went to streaming and other secondary markets, but studio negotiations whittled that down to 90. 
Forbes speculated that Cruise could use the success of Maverick as a bargaining chip for release terms on the next two Mission films, which could also play a big hand in saving the theatrical experience for movie fans. As Cruise himself wrote on Instagram, 36 years after the first film, Top Gun Maverick is here. We made it for the big screen, and we made it for you, the fans. I hope you enjoy the ride this weekend. At the Cannes Film Festival, Cruise went on record to say that he wants to make movies for the theater experience and so that people can go out and watch them. He went on to promise that Maverick never would have been released direct to a streaming platform. He believes that movies should always be experienced in a theater, as it's something special people can share with the others around them and partake in the collective excitement.